When I first downloaded Photoshop 10 years ago, I could have never imagined that today I would be a full-time brand designer. Getting here was definitely a journey, one that's filled with interesting turns and so many horrible projects. Get comfortable, get a drink or a snack and get ready because today I'm gonna share some of the worst things that I've ever designed. Ciao besties, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Viviana and if you're new here on this channel, we chat about brand design, we design entire brand identity from scratch and uh, we have a lot of fun. As you probably guessed from the title, today we're gonna take a trip down memory lane where I will share with you some of my past projects from my very first designs to university work and then today's. Some of this stuff is really bad so I give you full permission to roast me in the comments. I most certainly will. And while you're there, please consider subscribing to the channel or liking this video. It really helps and I promise you my designs have definitely improved from what you're about to see. Obviously I can show you everything because there's a lot of projects especially for my time at design school so we're basically gonna go through all the stages of my design journey and we're gonna review a project each all right so for the longest time i was convinced that i started getting interested in graphic design around 2014 2015 because i still have some of the works that i made at the time and i couldn't find anything older than that so i figured that happened around that time but just the other day as i was putting together this video i found files from 2012 it's been 10 years it's insane brand design wasn't always what i did of course the reason i got photoshop in the first place is very embarrassing <laughs> let's just say that i was creating content featuring my favorite tv shows my favorite singers and uh, that's all i'm gonna say but yeah basically i was doing a lot of edits photoshop effects but nothing major you are not gonna see any of that absolutely not the first design that we're gonna review is from 2014 in 2014 i remember that i used to dream about and this is embarrassing also i I used to dream about having a YouTube channel of my own. I've always loved YouTube, as you may guess, and I really wanted a channel of my own. So I started creating some headers for a channel and uh, I created a YouTube channel, this YouTube channel. But the thing is, I never posted. I designed these headers because I wanted like to fulfill this fantasy that I had, but I never posted. I don't know honestly what was going on in my head. Let's just take a look because whoa i have blurred down the name because you don't need to know this is so 2014 if you didn't know anything about a design and i showed you this you will 100 percent get that it was made in 2014 or 15 because oh my god i did this on photoshop and it's so funny like the arrows the dotted line like why hi everyone youtube <laughs> It doesn't mean anything! If you were around that time and you were interested in a little bit about design or if you were online a lot, you will understand this. Like this is the equal of like the galaxy pants that everybody was wearing. It would be no surprise to anyone to know that I looked like this at the time. Yeah, this is peak design for me. This is the one that I remember that I wanted to use, but there's another one. I honestly have no excuse this type of design has 2014-15 like written all over it it's so ugly <laughs> and then the hashtag not so funny excuse me what and you know what the funny thing is and i don't want to shame anyone but there's definitely some designers who are still stuck in this era let's just say that they don't really align with my style i'm sure that if you go on fiverr right now and you ask for like a minimalistic logo you will get something like this and then the picture the picture on the background why i can't i can't let's just move on to the rest because i cannot do this after this i honestly don't know what happened years of absolutely nothing i must have lost all the files that i had back then because i remember keeping up with it by this time i already realized that i really enjoy design so i don't see how i could have stopped for so long actually in 2016 i designed my very first invitation and it was the invitation for my 18th birthday i wish that i could show you because it was a show i cannot find it anywhere and it literally keeps me up at night i basically designed it on photoshop using a, a really awful geometric font and i used no dimensions and with this i mean that i created a rectangle with random numbers and i just designed it of course when i went to get it printed the guy was like so confused i was so clueless 
it was embarrassing honestly i'm not sure but i am gonna try to find the exact font that i use because i remember it i don't have it anymore obviously but if i can find it i'm gonna show it now can you imagine like an entire invitation written with this font i was insane but anyway it was around the time that i decided that i wanted to pursue design as a career and go to university i attended design school from 2017 to 2021 and of course i designed a lot of things most of which weren't about brand design at all. However, I did design a couple of logos here and there for projects outside of uni, like this one here from 2019. Okay, so the story behind this is that this was a business that I was supposed to be a part of. It was supposed to be like entertainment for kids parties and we called it Daydream, I don't know why. The writing that you see below the logo is basically the Italian translation for Daydream. I was already in my second if not third year of uni, so what is going on girl first of all this is a business card we didn't even launch the business but for some reason we needed a logo and a business card sure there's also the back and you could say oh wow this illustration is so cool sure but i didn't do it let's go back to the logo because that's what i actually did okay so the vibe was supposed to be like doodle very fun very i don't know curvy i don't have anything against people who use these fonts but if you know my work now you know that i would never use a font like this it's not that it's bad, it's just that it's simple and uh, the only thing that I did was adding that sparkle at the end of the M and just manipulate slightly the M to make it a little bit longer so it would, I don't know, it's not working, like you can totally see that I added that little curve and I remember thinking that I was like this amazing designer, oh my god, type manipulation queen because I did the little tail of the M and it took me ages by the way to just get it right i didn't even play with the thickness of the lines like you can see in the rest of the logo like nothing go girl give us nothing the writing at the bottom is too long like it doesn't fit very well i don't know i see someone who has a lot of ideas but they didn't have the technique to execute them but of course this project never launched so maybe it's for the best anyway none of my uni work was horrible well <laughs> and in 2020 i worked on what i consider to be my first ever brand design passion project for my web design class we were asked to create a landing page for a product but we were supposed to come up with the product ourselves the assignment was to create the web page not the branding but at the time i was already watching videos by kel lauren and maybe even abby Connick, so i was very excited to create create a branding project. I took that opportunity to do what I saw them do in their videos. And I was so excited. Not about the web design part though. If you go and have a look at my services, you will see that I do not offer web design and that should tell you everything about my experience in that class. But for the sake of this video and for the sake of roasting myself, I will show you the landing page. It's horrifying and I'm showing you just to have a laugh. But uh, in my defense, I will say that I try to keep it as simple as possible because I knew that I had to code to remake it and I obviously didn't know how to code. The product that I created was a perfume called Moonstruck and the brand that created this perfume was a brand called Selene, the goddess of the moon. The entire project had like witchy vibes so that's why I used the goddess of the moon and then Moonstruck. Of course all the writing is in Italian but you don't need to know what it says. Here there's a small description of the product and then we have the icons which is my favorite part honestly. A little bit about the brand and this is horrible why did i do this like this like what is wrong with me guys i did this in 2020 but now let's take a look at the actual branding because uh this is slightly better so okay the perfume was called moonstruck and uh, i created this kind of logo that i honestly don't mind like it's not something that i would do today but it's not that bad either given the fact that i only designed like a couple of logos in all my entire design school journey i mean it's not bad this was like peak design for me again i don't mind this label this like really grainy gradient it fits with the vibe so i don't mind this even this frame thing sure but the thing that i hate the most about this is the logo for Selene. It's so bad. What is wrong with me? I remember that I chose this font for some web design related reasons, but still, it's horrible. Then I had to put this on mockups. This is the worst mockup for this kind of thing. Like, my mistake was not to look up mockups before because obviously this label doesn't fit. At the time, I didn't know much about design resources. This was the only mockup that I could find. 
And I am pretty sure that this is the first time ever that I use a mock-up in a branding project, which is insane because again, I made this in 2020, two years ago. But yeah, I am proud of myself for putting all this effort into something that didn't require all of this effort because as I said, the assignment was to make the page. So my professor didn't even look at any of the things that I did. But I can really tell that I was starting to get really interested in this branch of design and I never really had the chance to dip my foot into it and explore it. In June 2021, I finally graduated, I created my Instagram page and you know how the story goes. So to end this deep dive into my design pass, we are going to review the first ever passion projects that I uploaded on my Instagram page. At that time, I wasn't aware that design challenges existed, so I used a brief from a website called Good Brief and the project that we're going to review is called Spun and it's from June 2021. Let's take a look. Oh, and by the way, if you want to have a look at it, is still up on my page. First of all, the brand is called Spun, as I said, and it's for sparkling lemonade. I have to say, honestly, that I'm not too mad about this. Because the logo kind of works. There's actually some type manipulation. I wasn't very skilled at that yet, but uh, I appreciate the effort of like rounding up the edges and then manipulating the end. But the thing, obviously, that I don't like about this is that it's not a branding, it's just a can. I didn't do any logo marks, sub marks, secondary logos, nothing. I basically just created the design to fit the mockup. It's not an entire branding, but um, I do like the font that I use because it's actually the font that I ended up using for my branding. You can tell that I was getting inspired by Ken Lawrence's work because I used that shape and then this type Then I actually kind of used in my latest project, which is insane. I mean, it could work with some work, it could work. So this was my design work over the years. Definitely interesting for sure. But in all seriousness, I think that it's very important to look back at your work because it shows you how much you have grown, evolved and improved. In order to be where you are now, you needed to be there first. That's just part of the journey. So if you're a designer and you ever feel discouraged, take a look back at your work and think about how proud that person would have been of where you are now. If you're a beginner, you've just seen that it's completely normal to have a rough start. I have been into design for 10 years and I feel like I finally found my style only in the past year and I'm constantly changing too. We're all in this together, let's take this one day at a time and see what happens. If you have made it to this part, I want you to do something. Leave a comment and tell me all about your design journey. I want to know everything, how and why you started, what is the worst thing that you've ever designed and what you will tell your old self, all of it. And also let me know if you would be interested in watching me redesign some of these logos because I do have a few ideas and I would love to see them in action. If you would like to see more content like this, you can support the channel by subscribing and liking this video. I'm on all social media, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, so you can go and follow me there. Have fun scrolling to the very first post on my Instagram page. Well, the stuff that you've seen today definitely doesn't represent me anymore, so if you would like to see my most recent brand design project, then check out this video here. Thank you so much for watching, I will see you again in another video next week. Ciao!